Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah. I'm your host, Muslim Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'a. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ma'a. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. How are you? Alhamdulillah, thank you. MashaAllah. Sheikh Ma'a, last episode we were talking about Qadha prayers. Um, you, know, you mentioned the conditions for Qadha prayers and, and whether we can do it in congregation or not. I wanted to ask you, Sheikh. What happens if one person um, discovers that he wasn't performing the salah properly? For example, maybe I wasn't pr pronouncing Surah Alhamd correctly for five years or so, and now I've realized, oh, I wasn't, you know, praying correctly. Those previous salah are they qadha? Do I have to make them up? A'udhu billah, al-sami'an alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. Initially, it is very important for our respected youth to um, just before they get to the age of um, adolescence or even if afterwards to learn أحكام الصلاة uh, from the beginning of the قراءة of the تكبير till the end of the doubts and shukuk. Just to make sure that they're on the safe side, that if they discover in, I don't know, 5, 10, 20 years' time that their salah was, for example, batil for any reason or wasn't correct. So it's better that we learn these ahkam from the beginning. If I'm a youth in, my, in the age of 17, 18, or even less, just open the uh, book of the Masajah of my own marja and read it. How do I perform? the hamd, the surah, is it allowed or with silence, for example? The takbirah, is it a must or I can ignore it, for example, and start the salah with the, with the hamd straight, for example? And the arkan and so forth. Important that we try to avoid uh, doing qadha every time when we discover that there's something is missing from the salah and that is, a, let's say, that it's a key element and, and rukun, for example. Or let's say some might never know about uh, the specific ghusl, the wajib ghusl, and then they discover after a few years that they prayed without doing the ghusl, the wajib ghusl, that purifies them for the salah. So it's important that for the youth, and even those who are elder than uh, the youth, to be able to study and, and, and uh, ask about these ahkam, to avoid excessive, you know, uh, uh, act of repeating of salah and, and, and the qada. With regard to the questions you asked, um, there's no need for the one to repeat the salah um, as long as they're going to start reading the Hamd Surah uh, correctly from now on. Uh, what you did before, that's fine. Uh, don't worry about it. So from now on, make sure that you read the Hamd Surah correctly and accordingly. And of course, the say it says it's preferable as a precaution for the one to repeat it. If you want to repeat it, it's better uh, either. But anyway, it's not wajib for the one to repeat the salah. Asan Shaykhna. Shaykhna, I think it's important that we don't get mixed up with uh, you know, having a, a mistake in your salah and you were missing a rukun of salah. For example, if I prayed for one whole year without doing the takbir to the haram at the beginning. So I would say Bismillah and go straight into my salah. And I thought that was fine, that was right. Later on I discovered, no, this is wrong. Um, in that case, I have to repeat my salah, no? I mean, that's why I said that uh, those individuals must learn the ahkam. And it's mentioned in the beginning of the Rasala of the Marja that you must learn um, the ahkam in which you are facing daily. So you must learn the ahkam salah, it's wajib. Just roughly, what are the wajib acts and the arkan and the salah, so you don't miss them. So if you prayed one year without takbirat al-ihram, or you, you missed a ruku' or two sujoods, for example, in one of the raka'at of the salah, then you have to repeat the salah, of course. 
the, the rukun and the key element, if it's missed, then you have to make it up later, the whole salah. The salah is batil. So that's the problem we have within our communities that some would uh, not really ask or seek advice and get information about uh, the salah and its ahkam and eventually falls or she falls in to uh, the idea of, you know, they have to go back and repeat the whole year, for example. As I mentioned just previously, that the one prayed without the right way of ghusl, for example, or without even doing ghusl. And uh, of course, they have to repeat the salah in this case. Sheikh, what about an individual um, who, in their you know, in their youth, didn't really pay much attention to salah, didn't really follow the obligations properly? Um, but as they got older and wiser, alhamdulillah, they Allah subhanahu wa taala gave them the taqwa to perform salah properly, and they they took salah with more um, precaution and with, with with greater care. Does that individual have to repeat his salah? Well, this individual should perform the qada of the salah that he missed for any reason. And they should uh, try to work out the estimate how much of the salah that they have missed. Let's say they might say, I think I missed a whole month because I didn't do uh, ghusl in that whole month, the wajib ghusl, for example. In this case, he must repeat uh, a whole month of worth of salah uh, of that month, and so on. And as I've said, uh, the best way is to uh, get the knowledge of the ahkam of salah in that young age to avoid uh, falling in the repeating of not only a month, a month could be a year, could be a decade you have to repeat, one or two decades of your uh, time that you have to repeat, and that's a huge, it's a lot. Sheikhna, uh, what about an individual who thinks, so is not 100% sure, but he thinks that his previous prayers may have been void, may not have been good enough, or he made a mistake, maybe he wasn't sure his wudu was correct, or, or his ghusl, um, does that individual have to perform qada of those prayers? For such person, he needs to only repeat the ones that he's sure about. So if you're certain that you missed, let's say, one week of salah, for whatever reason it was, then you must repeat one, one week and forget about the rest, um, the ones that you are unsure of. So make sure that you try to you know, um, work out exactly how many days or weeks you missed and you only do the qada of the ones you're sure about and you leave the rest. So it's, it's, it's a case of doubt. If there's doubt, then we don't really, we need to pay attention to the doubt unless there's certainty. Exactly. You're full of certainty and, and assurance. Hassan. Sheikhna, you mentioned about, um, you know, we discussed people who passed away and you know, parents, if they have qada prayers, that is, it is upon uh, the eldest son to perform those qada prayers. What if you know we have an individual um, who, in the elderly age, doesn't really pray much, or maybe they have a mental illness where they forget to pray, or they because of their illness they they don't pray properly? Are those prayers still mandatory upon the the children or the eldest child? You see, in some cases those elderly reach the age in which they lose awareness. Even if you go to them as, you, as uh, uh, their grandson or son, they can recognize you. You tell them, my name is such and such, do you know me? They can't even answer you. Um, in such cases, uh, the salah would be dropped for those elderly who lose awareness. They can never recognize what is right from the wrong. However, in this case, you don't have to pray, we don't have to um, re repeat their salah or do the qada as elderly son. It's not wajib because their situation, the, the duty of salah is dropped from them. That illness that they're in um, reached the stage in which they don't have to pray anymore. Halas, the, the, the man or that woman 
who is in their 70s, 80s, and they cannot uh, be aware of their surroundings, they don't have to pray anymore. خلاص. They're just a piece of flesh on the bed and waiting for, uh, for their uh, departure from this world. And in this case, no, there's no wajib on us as elder, elderly son to uh, pray the salah if they passed away afterwards and do the qaba of, of the parents. And, and you know, we look at our, our maraja and fuqaha, may Allah protect them and give them long lives there. In the, in the 80s and 90s, and alhamdulillah, they're still very, very sharp and their brains are very, very active. Shaykh, there's one thing I wanted to discuss with you, and that is um, in regards to qadha prayers, is that, let's be honest, there is no real reason for your salah to qaw qadha, and there is no real reason for you to miss your prayer. Um, and maybe this is an is, is a issue in our community, and maybe it's an issue with our, our youth, that they pray salah, they delay their prayers, and they pray right at the last minute, and they, in a way, they're flirting with their salah, becoming qadha. Is there any advice or any tips you can give the youth that to, to make sure that they, you know, they don't allow their salah to go qadha? Well, the Holy Quran states clearly, in salata tanha an al wal munkar, that uh, performing the salah, the daily salah, would uh, refrain the one from the acts of uh, indecency and wrongdoing. So the, the act of salah itself will push away the Satan, push away those um, bad desires and habits and attract the one towards Allah and worship and uh, morality and ethics and so forth and faith. So if I don't really care about the salah, and uh, I try to pray it as qadha, for example, deliberately, without any reason. Um, in, um, in this case, that individual might fall into some kind of haram acts and um, inappropriate acts, for example. You might see him listening to music, for example, songs, for example. You might you know, see him going for dating, for example, or eating haram food, for example. Why? Because he neglected the salah, and he knew that the salah is wajib. So neglecting the salah might cause that the one, the individual, would fall into the acts of haram in his daily life. And that's on top of the haram that he's committing by uh, leaving the salah till it gets qada, and he has to make it up later. So the best advice is to, as we are organized in our time, you know, we get to school by nine o'clock, uh, we, we go to work on time, make sure we don't come to the work uh, late, and so forth. Let's also have this schedule for, and the timetable for our own daily salah, which is the guarantee for the success in dunya and akhirah. رَبَّنَا آتَنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ there is something awaiting us in the hereafter. So either good or bad. It depends on our deeds. So we try to win both the dunya and akhirah. The one who wins both worlds, he's the true winner. So we try, inshallah, to perform these uh, obligatory acts, salah or other than salah, you know, siyam, hajj, and so forth. And try to get as much as we can in this dunya of good deeds and to be our savings for the hereafter and in paradise, inshallah. Shaykhna, do we have any narrations that suggest that we should pray um, early and, and on time rather than praying towards the end of, of, this, of the uh, time period of Salah? Well, initially, the Holy Quran states that there are three main times in uh, the daily prayers and the early, the dawn time and the noon time and the dusk time. So it's mentioned, there's a verse in the Quran that mentions that these are the prescribed times that when the Adhan is, is called, then we have to pray. Of course, it's mustahab, it's not wajib. But we need to get this mustahab because we need rewards on the Day of Judgment. That hasana, one hasana and reward 
counts a lot for us. So the better and, and, and the best is to offer the salah on time as much as we can to get those rewards. And of course, the narration which speak about that you get the, uh, the bounty of this dunya, the rizq, you know, the sustenance of, of those who pray on time, and other hadith about uh, praying on time, and of course, um, the rewards in the hereafter are greater. So we should stick with the verse of the Holy Quran and the hadith, and we try to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by praying on time to make it a habit, as we have some habits every day. We try to make the habit that we pray on time, so we can enjoy the rest of the time happily without the worry of that I have to pray, you know, just 10 minutes before the sunrise, for example. No, I pray from the first minute the Adhan is called and I rest the rest of the minutes and hours. I think it's also been made mustahab for the convenience, um, you know, and, and out of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, because not everyone can make it at that time. So, you know, it's, it's been made easier for yourself so that you have a good window, a time period to pray the Salah. But it's been made mustahab that, yes, we should be praying it on time exactly. as soon as the Adhan is made. Thank you very much, Sheikhna, for today's discussion. And, in, and thank you to all the viewers for joining us on, on the Ikhqam SOS. Inshallah, we'll be discussing more on our next episode. See you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. <laughs>